Hi, it's nice to have you back here in my new video again. I think it's time for me to talk about about this camera, this Ricoh Theta Z1, the 2.0 version. Theta Z1 has a huge firmware upgrade. This is by far the biggest update that I ever see on the Theta Z1. In my opinion, the firmware 2.0 has completely changed the way we enjoy the Theta Z1 photography. And coming next, I will share with you my in-depth review and some personal ideas on this firmware 2.0. This is the only video on the YouTube channel that you can find that has the in-depth explanation of every one of the greatest and the latest feature that's been packed in the Theta D1. So now let's get started. When you have installed the 2.0 firmware with the Theta D1, it feels like you have a brand new Theta Z1 model. It looks like the Ricoh has officially released the Ricoh Theta Z1S or even Z2 because there are a lot of new features. These great new features has unleashed a lot more potential, especially on imaging quality, the computational photography, and a lot more right inside the Theta Z1. Push the boundary of Theta Z1 once again. It looks like this camera model, although it's been designed for years ago, but in the year 2021, this camera model is still very juicy. The Theta Z1 is now a lot more faster. When we talk about fast, I mean the hardware speed and also the Theta app. When we see the gallery menu thumbnails, the loading speed is a lot faster and the Theta Z1 could now capture raw images with 13 FPS burst capture mode. That is a lot faster and that will completely change how we enjoy the Theta photography. So when equipped with the firmware 2.0, the Theta Z1 kind of like has a little bit more magic in computational photography. When we turn on the noise reduction mode, actually there are some advanced computational raw photography algorithm running at background to generate a computational high quality 16-bit raw image directly in the camera body. So next one is about the Ricoh Theta Stitcher. I mean, the latest version is 2.20, but never mind, with my tips and tricks, although the Ricoh doesn't officially support standalone Stitcher, but with my help, with my tips and tricks, you can make it happen, you can make your Ricoh Theta Stitcher work as a standalone Stitcher, no matter you have Windows platform or Mac platform. Every great feature of the Theta Z1 Stitcher has all been obtained in a standalone hack. What you don't know about firmware 2.0 is actually the Ricoh finally released the official burst capture API to third party developers. Actually, Ricoh has invented the burst capture API back in the firmware 1.00. The Ricoh 61 could capture with burst capture mode when turn on the HDR rendering, handheld HDR, or noise reduction, and auto and JPEG only mode. But until recently, on March 2021, the Z one engineer finally released a beta test version of the Burst Capture API to third-party developers. With official release on firmware 2.00, the Burst Capture API has now been officially released to third-party developers. Burst Capture API is now a lot more stable with less bug. And now we should see that in the future, the kind of like a lot more new plugins that takes advantage of the burst capture capability of the Theta D1. When you can capture raw images with 30 frames per second, now it, there is a lot more you can do with the plugins, with the firmwares, with coding technology. So what you can create with Z1 is now has never been so unbelievable. And needless to say, the Ricoh Theta Z1 now has a brand new version with a bigger capacity of the internal storage. It has as much as 51 gigabytes. I could save a lot more photos and videos. Okay, coming next, let's talk about the firmware 2.0 in the customer perspective and also in the perspective of the third party developer. You know, I am not just a customer of Z1, but I'm also a third party developer behind this camera model. The biggest improvement you can find on the Z1 is now you can turn around RAW plus JPEG and even with RAW plus JPEG you still have the HDR rendering, noise reduction, and handheld HDR. These three options work quite different from one to another. So in the coming next, I'm going to give you my in-depth review and explanations behind every one of the shooting modes on the RAW plus JPEG mode. So first, let's talk about HDR rendering. So HDR rendering could 
generate a 16-bit raw image. That is a lot different because the Z1 could natively capture 12 bits raw image. The Ricoh Cito Z1 engineer has completely rewrite the pipelines underneath HDR rendering mode when you turn on the RAW plus JPEG because with the option HDR rendering can generate a 16-bit high quality, high dynamic range, 16-bit RAW image directly from the camera completely change how we capture HDR shot. The Z1 would capture four images automatically with very smart criteria to bring back all the details from highlight the details and they merge all the raw images together. And the 16-bit raw image is not a float 16 DNG. It looks like it is a 16-bit integer, integer DNG. It's not float, it's integer. It looks like the quality has improved a lot. And nearly to say, sometimes with the fuse, the blend different exposure together, the every pixel, the quality of every pixel is also improved. Considering there is a lot of mathematical tricks in the computation of photography, we merge the different exposure together, and finally, it save as a 16-bit integer high-quality raw images. The pipeline is totally invisible, but once you have understand what has happened when you have pressed the shutter button, you will have a better understand of the HDR rendering, and you will finally understand so how and why you need that 16-bit raw image, and I think this could definitely help helps those photographers who focus on real estate or capture some high dynamic range objects. The result we have is just a single RAW plus a single jab. You don't have to fuse them together because the Z1 has did every job for you and it will make the HDR rendering a lot more intuitive and it's very user friendly. So I highly recommend you should try the HDR rendering the first moment you upgrade this firmware. It is groundbreaking. One more thing about HDR rendering is for the capacity of a single raw image, it increased from 15 megabytes to 16 megabytes. The file size has only increased by 10 megabytes. Behind the raw capture, they also have implemented a very smart compression algorithm that you can compress a high bit depth files with the appropriate file size and save you a lot of space and also increase the writing speed when you save to the internal storage. In the noise reduction option, the Z1 also captures multiple raw images in the burst capture mode. But different from HDR rendering, in noise reduction mode, the Z1 will capture multiple raw images with exactly the same exposure. So multiple 12-bit, so stack them together, reduce the noise, also generate a 12-bit raw image. On the basis of this 12-bit high-quality raw image, there is a lot more demosaic, some of the tone mapping, and finally the Z1 will generate in-camera JPEG. So the pipeline has been changed. It works just like RAW Plus, but without the ghosting. It's purely stack them together to reduce the noise by increase the ratio of the effective signal, increase the signal noise ratio. And on the basis of this high quality 12 bit raw image, the pipeline could also do some demosaic, some turn curve correction, of generate a high quality in camera JPEG, the dual fisheye JPEG. And next one, on the basis of the native stitching parameters, the Z1 could perform a very fast in real time stitching and generate in camera 7K panorama in JPEG mode. Final result you have is a high quality. 12-bit raw image on stitch, do fisheye together with in-camera stitch, JPEG files on the basis of this 12-bit high-quality raw image. Since we have this high-quality raw image, we can do whatever we want with furthermore post-process with the help of Adobe systems and the Ricoh C31 stitcher. Uh, you don't have to increase the bit depth. But once you have a high quality on every one of the pixel, even though you only have a 12 bit, but the quality is totally different. The next one is about the handheld HDR when turn on the RAW plus JPEG. Considering you can also get a 12 bit high quality RAW image with a JPEG stitch in the camera. Honestly speaking, I don't know what Z1 has done in the pipeline, but uh, judging from my experience and final result, when you turn on the handheld HDR, even we only have a 12-bit raw image, but the dynamic range, the dynamic range has been increased a lot. 
the hand HDR really works great on your everyday travel, in your everyday life. And that is the reason why when I turn on my Z1, the hand HDR in RAW Plus JPEG is turned on by default. I have also made an in-depth review on this hand HDR back in the year, there's only a JPEG mode. But uh, with the former 2.0, we have we still have all the capabilities of the original handheld HDR, but the result is completely different considering we now have this 12-bit high-quality raw image. The Z1 capture all these images with the burst capture API. You should know that when you capture with multi-bracket shooting mode, even with the Formula 2.0, the Ricoh Theta Z1 still didn't implement the personal capture feature. So shooting with multi-bracket is as slow as the previous Formula. Next one, let's talk about the stand-alone feature. It's not a feature of the Formula 2.0, but it is one of the most requested feature for the Rico official engineers. So I think it's really important to talk about the stand alone teacher feature once again back in the year in June 2021. And I have already given you a stand alone video tutorial on how to hack the Rico Cita teacher to make it work as a stand alone software on your platform. And on Windows platform, we can always locate this .ii file. If you can't find this information, you can just install the latest Rico Cedar feature and run and double click on the exe for the first time. And then later you will find this file in a specific folder in the slides. And you can substitute the username with your real name of your system and add the following sentences in the .ii file in the text editor. And uh, later, don't double click on the software. Just uh, drag and drop the images directly onto that Cita Stitcher icon and the standalone Stitcher gonna work for you. On the Macintosh platform, uh, it's the same as a Windows, but all, you should add something different to the dot .playlist file. And if you can't find this file, you can uh, install the Erico Cita Stitcher application and double click on the icon. It will definitely tell you there's an error. You find this .pdf file in this specific folder. And in the text editor, follow my previous tutorial, you will finally make it work. And there's also a bonus feature, you can turn on the grid by default. And uh, after you save all the PDF file, remember never open the application again. Drag and drop the images directly to the icon and the teacher will work for you. Okay, next up, let's talk about the Burst Capture API. So by the Formula 2.0, the Rico finally officially released the Burst Capture API to third party developers. And it is by far the most powerful tools that can boost the imaging quality to the next level and we are so glad to have this capability in our coding development. So back in the Formula 1.00, uh, Rico has already invented the Burst Capture API, but it's not open to the public. And back in the year when we can only shot in JPEG, we shot with HDR rendering, noise reduction, handheld HDR. By that moment, this JPEG file was all captured with the Burst API with the Burst Rate. There are altogether seven parameters in the Burst Capture API. Number one is the shooting mode. It defines whether you want to capture in a standard capture or you want shot in burst. So the, we should definitely choose burst because that is the reason why we utilize the Burst Capture API. And the second is whether you want to enable the raw output. That is to say, by default, you can only capture in JPEG. But if you enable the DNG output, you can capture in RAW plus JPEG. That is the reason why in the latest firmware, we have all the great features at the same time with RAW plus JPEG. The third one is the burst capture number. We can choose in between 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. You can capture up to 9 RAW plus JPEG with a single tab button. And in between all the capture numbers, uh, we can set a bracket step in between 0 to 9. For example, we have capture in three at the step as one, that is minus one, zero, and plus one. This is very flexible. And you can also add the burst compensation, that is all the images as a exporter compensation. For example, we add a minus one, 
to all the exposure values will be compensated by one EV. And we can also set some limit. So example, such as the max exposure time, or you can use the enable ISO control, whether you can change ISO in between the frames, or you can lock the ISO in between the frames. The burst capture API is very flexible and it is really, really powerful. Coming next, I'm gonna take my Z1 outside uh, in the day and night to show you the real power when you uh, cr creatively use the Z1 with the help of the firmware 2.0. So now let's get outside and enjoy the shooting. Here in the live preview, you can take a look at what I was experienced with the latest firmware. As you can see that uh, I'm choosing a shooting spot during the evening at the trees where you can see a lot of beautiful colors on the trees, the skies, the grass. And back in the shoot settings, as you can find with the Formula 2.0, we can turn on the RAW Plus JPEG. And I always set ISO upper limit to 200 in case that I want to get the best quality in auto mode. And back in the live preview, in the auto, in the auto option, you can see there is a noise reduction, the dynamic compensation, uh, HDR rendering, as well as the handheld HDR. So they all have been retained, but with completely redesigned from ground up with RAW plus JPEG. Uh, evaluate the real dynamic range. Be careful with the sky. And I choose a two second countdown to take the shot. And the camera will automatically capture multiple raw images and make HDR rendering right in the camera. And it takes a little bit more time to merge the rendering the HDR format. And the first time you can see the result is pretty awesome because there's a huge dynamic range, especially the spotlight and the, the sky in, in the foreground, in the background. Everything has a huge dynamic range, but with HDR rendering, a Formula 2.0 with RAW Plus JPEG, we can see the result is pretty awesome. In the live preview, once again, uh, I want to try to shoot another spot. I'll try to place my camera lower down a little bit because I want to see more of the foreground, especially the truck, the grass, the grass hooper. I want to place the camera lower down a little bit to have a, a bigger contrast in the foreground and background. And also, you can see I put exposure values to 0 0.3 to get the best overall exposure criteria. And also take the shot with two second countdown. And you might see the result uh, very soon at in-camera HDR synthesizing. And uh, automatically copy and paste the JPEG version through the official city app to my cell phone. As you can see, the result is pretty awesome. I like it very much. And I think, as you can see, there is a great foreground, a background, and everything around. Okay, so here is another situation. It's also a very extreme situation. Look at the highlight, the blown out highlight on the trees. And also on the background, you can see a very small lake with beautiful reflections of colorful lights at night. Actually, it was around 9 o'clock p.m. and uh, the sky it still has a little bit of color, but the signal to noise ratio, but the dynamic range is way too far for a single raw to capture. And here I try to place my Z1, I'm trying to find the best spot. As you can see, I always try to evaluate the final result to simulate in my mind whether it be what it looks like in the final result. And uh, here you can see I place the exposure value to 0 0.3 and the round way to make myself visible and uh, judging the light preview once again and take the shot with two second countdown. And after a little while, once again, you can see the in-camera HDR synthesizing result. I didn't expect it to be that much powerful. Here you can see the result directly from the camera Everything around has a beautiful dynamic range, beautiful detail in the dark, in the shadows, and also all details has been retained in the highlight. Everything was done in camera, and it will just take a few seconds longer compared with a single raw capture. That is all the power behind the Burst Capture API, and uh, a lot more mathematical computational magic behind all the pipelines. Okay. 
So after that, I decide to try to capture even more result with the CD1 with the former 2.0. Actually, uh, all the shots you have seen was all captured with HDR rendering. But I still want to try to see what I can do with a handheld HDR. Uh, I was using the Insta360 3 meters long selfie stick. Try to place my camera just above the Lotus and uh, use hand HDR. This time, because the camera is always shaky and it's a little bit windy at night, I want to try to what is the ultimate power of the hand HDR so that you can see I place a hand HDR just above the water, just above the Lotus, press the button and see what is camera in camera synthesizing HDR rendering could capture for me. And the result is also great. Take a look at that. Did you see that? It is all taken handheld. You can see I was uh, sitting at the, at the end of the water and everything you see in great details. And take a look at this one. What I have found is a great new spot for the shooting scenarios. Here you can see the great reflections on the trees and the, the trees was totally blown away, blown out uh, because it was too bright and uh, it's just with a single raw capture you just cannot bring back so many details but with hand HDR you can see I was holding a selfie stick in my hand and I was trying to tr to find what is the real power of a hand HDR with uh, such high dynamic range to two second countdown everything was shot handheld and uh, after a little while yeah did you see that all the details the camera bring back all the details from highlight, the, the shadows, because I was just so glad, I'm so happy about the result. So I went to, to the bar, raised a, a cup of beer. And in this case, I want to try to shot in my everyday line with HDR rendering. It's not handheld because you can see in the bar, there is uh, so many parts that has been blown out. Because it's, so I can see I was trying to place the mini tripod in between myself and a cup of beer and also you can watch out the shining beer that invented by the Thomas Earl. And uh, choose the countdown and uh, also set ISO sensitivity upper limit because I want to get the best possible and uh, try to place the camera at the appropriate height uh, a little bit lower than the high eye level and choose HDR rendering with the 0.7 exposure value judging from the line preview to get the best, best possible quality I think and uh, take a look at that this is a one shot and yeah and did you see that in official city app the loading speed is a little bit faster the developers must have done something right okay so in the Light preview just in camera result. This is pretty awesome. Although there is a tiny little bit blown out the way, uh, it doesn't matter because I always bring back all the details in the post process with a high quality 60 bit raw file. Okay, now I'm gonna show you a real world scenario for me to capture a dinner, a dinner panorama. You know, I'm going to enjoy the hot pot in a domestic store, and uh, this is how. My this is my shooting environment and my orientation. You can see I have put my Z1 on the top of the Insta360 three meters long selfie stick, and it looks like uh, it's finally it's invisible and uh, it's quite sturdy. But after all this stuff, the hot part is really really delicious. So here I can see I've intentionally shot uh, slow mo of the hot part, the soup. It's boiling up and here you can see I use the screen capture to show you everything during my capture in the Cita Z1 and I set the handheld HDR by default with the two second countdown uh, with the exporter value set to zero and you can see I have put my camera on the top of the hot pot and that is how I place my camera and to that in that viewpoint will give you the best immersive experience and you can see from the environment there is a, a very huge dynamic range the spotlight the shadows and also you can I still want to get a lot more detail on the soup 
handheld HDR is the best option for me to capture all these shots. I will think twice before I finally press the shutter button. And here you can see uh, taking with handheld HDR is also really, really fast. And I have taken multiple shots to guarantee that the result is going to be pretty awesome. I try to place myself in a different orientation. I try to smile to the lens. I try to place my uh, arm outside the stitching line and I try to place everything I can think about. Try to finalize the uh, final 360 shot as good as possible for you guys. Okay, to wrap up on the firmware 2.0 on the CCD1, I think it's a great time to have a recap on the Z1 firmware 2.0 because you have learned a lot in part one, part two, and also I've shown you some very powerful real-world shooting scenarios that will help you better understand the firmware 2.0. And to sum up, the HDR capture mode has never been so accessible and has never been so user-friendly considering the Z1 can now capture the 6-bit raw and 12-bit high-quality raw images with the help of the burst capture and in-camera stacking and merging explorer fusion that is just so powerful. And that will make high-quality raw images more accessible to a wider range of customers like you and me. And for those of you, you might be wondering, what is the relationship between the Z1 firmware 2.0 and the dual fisheye plugin? So can the dual fisheye plugins nourish a lot more capability from the firmware 2.0? The answer is yes, but the dual fisheye plugin has been retained in the plugin stores and the Yoshi Hirota has invented a brand new plugin that is called dual fisheye raw plugin. And it is only compatible with the Z1, and it is Z1's exclusive features that come together with the firmware 2.0. And the dual fisheye raw plugin could now be downloaded in the plugin store, and it is still in beta. When Yoshi Hirota officially released, the final version of the dual fisheye raw plugins are going to share with you the ultimate guide in the year 2021. That is by far the, the biggest update on the dual fisheye plugins as well. So stay tuned on my ultimate guide to fisheye raw and uh, the relationship. You're gonna learn a lot about the differences, the relationship between the 2.0 firmware, the official app, the official firmware, and also this very powerful third-party plugins. Spoiler alert, the best is yet to come. And that is the reason why I still believe in the year 2021, the Z1 is still the king of the point and shoot 360 cameras not only because it has a dual one inch sensors, a very powerful hardware platform, but also, you know, with the firmware 2.0, it is now a lot more juicy, a lot more user friendly. And the HDR render has never been so accessible. The high quality raw images has never been so accessible. And you should also wait for the final release of the dual fisheye raw plugins. So if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to sum up, subscribe, and hit notification bell. So stay tuned on my next big video on Z1. See you next time. Bye.